so if you look over here, I got my, uh, I got Mr. Scully here. I got a cannula coming out of his uh, brain and it comes down. I got a stopcock over on uh, this side, you guys can see. So I got a little stopcock over here and that CSF is gonna flow out and into uh, this tube. And the first thing it meets right here is that three-way stopcock. And so this right now is turned off to the transducer and open to drain. So if I had fluid flowing through this right now or CSF coming through it, it would go all the ways up through this chamber. If I go a little bit higher, you can see that drip chamber and it's going to fill this up right here. Now, if I decide that I want to measure an ICP, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this little thing, this little stopcock, turn it off to drain, and now it's open to the transducer. And so then I can plug in my little invasive monitoring thing here, um, and I can get an ICP. Now, this is going to be leveled at the patient's tragus, and there's actually a, uh, a little level device that comes with it that's pretty cool so you can measure this it, it attaches right where the transducer is and so then you can hold the other end up to the patient's tragus and make sure that it's level and then basically the distance away from this this uh, collection chamber is from the transducer will determine what ICP it drains at so uh, you have two I'm gonna go up a little higher so you can see this so you have millimeters of mercury and then you have centimeters of water. So the uh, centimeters of water is gonna be on the uh, this side here, this black side. And there's a little thing that I can pinch and then I can change where I want this to drain at. So typically you're gonna get uh, the ICP drain from the neurointensivist. They're gonna tell you that they want it to be at like, you know, 20 or so for an ICP. It's important to look at this millimeters of mercury as well, because if you're subtracting it from your blood pressure, we know blood pressure is in millimeters of mercury, and so this would be the number that you would be subtracting from your MAP to get your cerebral perfusion pressure, so MAP minus ICP, um, but the neurointensivist may give you that number in centimeters of water, so just make sure you know that there's a difference between the millimeters of mercury and then the, uh, the centimeters of water of pressure. So then if I look over here and I turn this around and I'll bring the camera down just a little bit so you can see this. So this is my, uh, my collection chamber here and I have it turned off to the bag, but anytime you're gonna be moving the patient, it's always good to take the stuff that's in here, I'm gonna move this up and then let it drain into the bag so it doesn't flow backwards because there's a little filter right up on here Let's see if i can get the camera to focus there's a little filter right here and you don't want csf flowing back into that filter because it can clog it up so always make sure you empty out that bag or empty out this this uh, chamber into the bag before you move this and before you move the patient and then it's also good to look at how much they've been draining and ask you know is this what you've been draining for you know, over an hour, over two hours, over 24 hours, get an idea of how much they've actually been draining off. All right, now, if you take this thing, it comes off the pole, but the way it comes off the pole, and I'm probably gonna back out just a little bit so you can see this, is you have these little, uh, let's see if I can get this in here. These little things here, they just pop off like this. And then there's this, let me see if I can get it in here. See this little thing I can like squeeze with my thumb here? This will loosen it so you can take it actually off the pole. And then if you have to like hang it or something in the ambulance, there is, or helicopter, there is a little hanging thing right here that you can hang it from to make sure that it's level. So if you had to hang it from something in the ambulance, just keep it from, try to you know, prevent it from swinging back and forth or whatever. But you can do that with this little, uh, this little hanging device. Now, if you're gonna be moving the patient and you're going to uh, you know, be moving them to your cot or whatever, it's important that you make sure you clamp 
closest to the patient. So we're gonna take a look at that now in the other camera. All right, so now this is coming out of the skull and it's gonna to lead to a stopcock. You wanna make sure before you move the patient that this is turned off to the patient. So this would be open to the drain and then this would be off to the patient. And then also follow that up and make sure that this one is turned off to the patient as well before you start moving that patient around. So off, and then make sure that this one is off. <laughs> 